The Immortal John Hancock here, back with Metal Jesus. Dude, thanks for having me on. Always. Today we're gonna do a video about the awesome artwork that came with Atari 2600 games. The nice thing about 2600 games is they're so different. They didn't have systematic uh, boxes that all look the same. They're all different. It's almost like album art, and yes. we're gonna go through some of our favorites. All right, let's show you. You are the perfect person to do this video with because you have an amazing complete in box Atari 2600 collection. Uh, tell me a little bit about it. Well, um, I just pretty much collect anything I don't have in a box and I really like 2600 games because they're so different. And anything I don't have, I, you know, I'll never have every game in box. But you know, I've been collecting for a long time and I have over about 400 box 2600 games. I'm always- 400. Yeah, <laughs> oh just 400. God. So I think what, what's interesting about this is that it's pretty unusual to, to see so many box Atari 2600 games. I mean, I certainly don't. When you go into retro gaming stores, even in Seattle, and we have many of them, you might see, maybe five or 10, and most of them are common. Sun faded. Sun faded, yeah. beat up, you know, they're not expensive, but but you almost never see these. Yeah, I've been collecting a long time, and I've, I have other friends that are big 2600 collectors as well, such as Rick Weiss, mm -hmm. and he happily trades me his extras, or he, he upgrades himself, and so I benefit from that. Yeah, and so what I love about this video is that uh, we are going to see games you just never see out in the wild. So this is pretty cool. So let's right. start with some of your favorites. All right, I have to start with one of my favorites of all times for the 2600, and that's Marauder. And the nice thing about Tiger Vision games is they had extra glossy covers, and they just, the artwork is superb, and it really made it stand out. If you saw this on um, on a display or at a game store, mm -hmm. you'd be like, holy cow, that looks awesome. Yeah, it, it looks like a really quality title. Like, yes. like what is this? This looks like a premium game. Yeah, and, and the good news about this game is it actually doesn't suck. It kind of <laughs> kind of plays like a Berserk. Okay, so. cool. Next, we gotta talk about, <laughs> let's talk about this game. So. Okay. Uh, iMagic, first of all, had a very standard look to their games, where it was this this uh, this foil look, this very shiny, <laughs> and uh, and and then they have this this weird what is this like a it's like a dinosaur with rockets flying through yeah. space, and and by the way, this looks like a this looks real, like like they yeah. made, like they took puppets they, or something. They did. They took a toy. Toys. They took a toy dinosaur, painted it, and they used it for the cover. So I think the reason why they get away with it is because this game is awesome. Yes, it's just great. <laughs> it's such a, it, it's one of the best games for the yeah. Atari, but it's just such a bad, cheesy cover. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like one of those really bad B movies yeah. that you would watch in the 80s or we would watch, you know what I mean? If this was a movie cover, I'd buy it for the same reason. That's probably true. Yeah. All right, up next, uh, a company that a lot of people don't know about, uh, Zymag, and this is a, what I call a crash company. This game hmm. company made a lot of games during the video game crash of 1983-84. And I don't know a lot about this game other than the cover is really cool. I mean, yeah. it has a tank and it's got a rainbow on it. Very 80s looking. Very 80s. It looks like actually like a VHS. Yes. Doesn't it? You know, or yes. like a Betamax or something yes. like that. <laughs> yeah, it's got, it's got a wonderful look. And, and if you look at the... Uh, you wonder why it didn't sell well. There's a KB sticker on here, and it says $7.99. So this, literally at the game, at the time of 1983-84, you could literally go into game stores and find full, like 2,600 games, five bucks. Oh less. man. Yeah. So, okay, so I wanna talk about this one here, yes. which I think actually is one of the best looking covers mm -hmm. uh, in your collection for sure. And that's a game called Threshold. I don't yeah. know anything about it other than this is an awesome cover. Yep, it uh, pretty much is a, sh a shooter like many games for the time period. It plays a little bit like Galaxian. This looks like a book cover, to be yeah. honest. Like if you were to go get an Isaac Asimov or an Arthur C. Clarke book, mm -hmm. you know, from the 80s, it was like, oh, this yes. is... <laughs> very sci-fi. Very sci-fi, but yeah. really, really nice. I love the colors and, and also the, the foil of the, of oh, the yeah. print there. Good time. All right, we can't talk about excellent 2600 games or cover art 
and not talk about Activision games. Yeah, true, true. And um, this is this Activision game, Pitfall, has been signed by David Crane. Nice. And uh, but Activision had such a unique. Um, perspective and imagery for their games yeah. that, that really made them stand out. Like when you saw an Activision cover, it's like you knew it was Activision. Yeah, it's true. They always had a, a solid color. They always had the same font, and then they they would have like an animated kind of uh, action scene. You know, with the rainbow. With, with the rainbow. That's right. Because that, that's right. Because their logo at the time, I think, was action Activision with the rainbow. Yep. That's very cool. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm so glad you brought this because. Dude, when you look back at the 80s and you think bad B movies, uh, well, there's a lot of them. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them. But one of them that stands, it, it stands at the top and is part of your heart and a part yes. of mine is Mega Force. Yes. <laughs> Deeds, not words. Yeah, that's right. There we go. <laughs> so a, a couple things here. The, the 20th Century Fox, they they standardized their boxes as well. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and they had a lot of movie licenses. So for instance, I think they had like, God, what, MASH? They yep. had some crazy... Porkies. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And so they always had the black with the, the 20th Century logo. Yep. But again, they have the movie poster right there. Yep. And, yeah, such a, and actually this game isn't bad. No, it's not bad at yeah. all. It's D is solid. Yeah. So um, and it's really hard to find these in good shape because they're the boxes there had these weird fold out option to, to get them and they're always ripped. Oh, and interesting. so yeah, this is one of my favorite B movies, and so I had to bring the game. Yeah, that's so cool, <laughs> dude. Um, so another one here, I, I saw this and I was like, ooh, I, I squealed like a girl. Uh, because I remember this very vividly, and that is Missile Command for okay. the Atari. So to give you a little perspective here, you know, the Atari had very basic graphics, obviously. But one of the things that, that, that these covers did was really spark your imagination and just sort of help you get into the mindset of playing this game. And this cover this collage that, that he painted or that the painter did for this i think was just spot on it's just it has this guy he's at this command console has these missiles going off has these cities in flames it was just brilliant i mean I, a lot of these early atari games you could get a poster of it and you would just stand back and you just be like that's art yep you know so i don't know i was just i love this yep the oil painting sold me on this game absolutely all right Next up is kind of a, a late release that came out um, in the late 80s when Atari was kind of winding down their production for the system. Uh, they had a series of games coming out. I really like this. I, I like military style games. I like jets. And Radar Lock to me was just, a, it kind of reminded me of like an Afterburner type game. Yeah. And it plays really well on top of that, but but the artwork looks amazing. Like I saw that and I'm like, cool, a jet blowing up another jet, I want the play. So that. this is actually an Atari release. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of a throwback to their to their early style. Yeah. But it, it, is, it is updated a little bit. It's yeah. a little bit cleaner, a little bit... Um, it, it's just different enough, isn't it? Yeah, it looks more like a huh. like a Nintendo cover to me. I it think does. they were trying to compete with like the the more intense graphics coming out of the late '80s. Yeah, interesting. All right, so next we're going to go to uh, another Atari cover that I remember vividly. I would stare at this, and that is for Vanguard. Yeah, amazing. So, uh, yeah, a, a, a game I really enjoyed on the Atari, but. This cover, again, another, you know, I'm a big fan of sci-fi anyways. I love that that late 70s, early 80s sci-fi art because I was a big sci-fi reader. And this looks like something, again, I would have read, you know, from Arthur C. Clarke or, or Isaac Asimov. Yeah. But I just love this, 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 uh, this tunnel and the ships. And again, it, it puts you in that mindset of the game because in the game you are piloting a ship and you're yeah. going through these tunnels and it, it's just awesome. Yeah, that cover again, really sold that game like that explains the game and I would see that game on the shelf and mm -hmm. be like I want to play the game one of the interesting things about this I just realized is that it has more of the Atari 5200 style yes so so Atari started um, I mean they basically changed their style for the 5200 which was mm -hmm. obviously after the 2600 and this was very much in that style silver box label era. yeah with this little little band here yep. as and well. then the 5200 would have the blue bar the 2600 and have the red bar. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. All right, we can't uh, talk about Star Wars, you know, without talking about Return of the Jedi Death Star Battle. I mean, when you see this cover, it, it explains 
every reason why people loved Return of the Jedi. Yep. I mean, when you watch Return of the Jedi, I remember fast forwarding to the, the space battle scene and watching oh. that over and over and over oh, again. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So when Atari did a cover, Parker Brothers, uh, did a cover for uh, Return of the Jedi. I mean, that's just like, soul. I'm sold. Yeah, and so actually, okay, so this is an example of Parker Brothers. So Parker Brothers also had their own style as well. They had these yeah. really nice, thick boxes that you would slide open like this. Um, and then they, they basically had this sort of style where the, yeah. the, the, their their font or their, their logo would be written kind of to the side. I remember Frogger yeah. looking like this. Um, so many of them. So. Hubert. Dude, I look at this and I'm like, I'm just instantly back in, you know, the 1980s. It's awesome. All right, next up. Another Parker Brothers, and again, another example. And they had uh, different box options. Oh, this okay. one is a single box. These came out later. I do believe Gyrus came out in 84. Wow, okay. But again, it was very um, graphic. It had like diagonal yep. um, label of the game. Yep. And even very much, I look at this and I think of like Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, or maybe like 2001, oh, you yeah. know, that, that ship. Yep. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, again, I, uh, Parker Brothers actually was a company that, again, I think a lot of people forget about them, but they mm -hmm. made excellent games back on the Atari. They, they did. Were... They made some excellent titles. So here is one of my favorite mm -hmm. covers of all time uh, for many reasons, but that is the original Space Invaders. So I love this cover for a couple reasons. One, uh, when I was very young, my dad was actually into the band Boston. And the very first Boston album, or maybe it was the second one, but basically they always had this sort of floating city, uh, you know, because you basically see right here, like there's a city, there's these beams. It's weird. Like, I don't know what's going on here. I guess I would look at this as a kid going, what is the, what is the background of this? Who lives in the city, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, and that's, that's what I loved about these, these, this art was that you could get lost in it. And so it reminds me of Boston and it reminds me of Space Invaders. All good. Well, we can't talk about Atari 2600 cover art and then not at least show one Sega game. Sega really went all out, a lot like some other third-party companies, because they really tried to uh, one-up other companies with their graphics and art. And TaxScan is an example of that. It's it's very in your face. It definitely clearly says, yeah. hey, Sega made this. <laughs> yeah. Um, gateful box, wow. a lot of quality here. This this was actually larger than a standard 2600 box as well. Oh, interesting. And so, um, you know, this this is an example. You know, the game's decent, but but really the cover art is just another example of cover art selling. Yep. Mostly and it comes with stickers. stickers. Yep. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and uh, performance tracking. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. See, complete in box. This is yeah. the, this is the cool stuff right here. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And I'm a huge save collector. <laughs> okay, and the last one for this video, Dark Chambers, and you know we've shown a lot of military and action, but we have to show the fantasy because fantasy was so big in the '80s. You know, and, and Dark Chambers was like kind of a gauntlet style game by Atari. By Atari, and uh, you know, you had the the Atari Advantage uh, sticker on the cover, and of course, you had a little new saying, "Hey, hey, we're still making games for the 2600 <laughs> in the late 80s." So, okay, so when did this one come out? Do you remember? Late 80s. Late yeah. 80s. Okay, yeah. it's interesting though because again, you see this also with uh, Radar Lock. I mean, yeah. these are very. You can see Atari kind of going to. Uh, uh, I mean, it, the red is almost identical, or at yeah. least it's certainly close in shade. And this would be an example of red labeled games. So the actual cartridges would be red labeled as well. Oh, and right. So these came out when the Atari 2600 Junior came out and they're trying to remarket the 2600 as like a retro console. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So we chose our favorite box art for the 2600 and we chose, you know, half a dozen. Yeah. A dozen. What are your favorites? Yeah, I mean, you have 400 of them, and there's many, many more. So, and, and, and there are all different kinds of varieties. We'd love to know what some of your favorites are. Please post a comment down below. Also, personally, I'd like to just know, did you enjoy this video? It's something a little bit different, kind of focusing on the art aspect of it, something you don't really hear about very often. So let us know. We'd love to make more of them because there are plenty of games. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. Always love being on. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thanks for subscribing. Take care. John and I definitely love the mighty Atari 2600, and we have an official Atari 2600 buying guide coming to my channel very soon. So definitely subscribe so you never miss a new video every week.